during the 80s, animal prints became fair game for both ready-to-wear and accessory designers. This year, they stampeded the fashion market. You can put down 1989 as the year of the animal print. Designers credit the ecology movement. Animal prints appeal to women who are concerned about the preservation of the natural world. But there's also the fact that the patterns and the colors they come in are extremely flattering. Ocelot, leopard, giraffe, tiger, zebra, and panther have all made their mark. They've been printed on leather and suede and in a whole range of fabrics from flimsy chiffons to luxuriously piled fake furs. Designers use them discreetly to line a camel coat or boldly as a full-length evening dress. In New York, Bill Blass now considers animal prints a classic. He tells me he plans to use them in many ways. It seems so to me, Alice. You know, whenever I do them in scarves or in bathing suits, they're the biggest selling numbers I have. This season, particularly not making furs, I'm interested in doing animal prints. Adrian Bittadini tells me her animal prints for spring are spunky and sensual at the same time. My feeling for animal was to break the classics because I felt for a classical, luxurious collection, but I always look for a twist. And I think to use with a wonderful camel dress an animal print belt um, creates a whole different aura. And it's something that also never dates. In Paris, animal prints score as accessories. Dominique Orientis uses them as jewelry belts and bags. I like because it's kind of, it's geometric without being geometric, you know, it's softer. And uh, the color are more casual, you have the brown, the beige, and you can mix them together. You can use uh, uh, very uh, raw material as wood, mixed with this kind of uh, print. At Lord Frizone, Sophie Frizone tells me they've been using animal prints for so long they've become a trademark. We have been using animal prints since uh, Motrison was created, which is about 20 years ago. And uh, we use them in everything we do, in boots, in shoes, in handbags. It's a pattern, it's something that's unusual, they can mix and match it. And uh, it doesn't have the emotional issue of fur involved with it. Patrick Kelly tells me a fake leopard coat is the buy of the season. All the little black dresses that they have at home with pearls and these things on them, they can put this leopard down coat on it and they'll be totally new for this season. In Tokyo, Hannah Mori uses animal prints in several ways. Animal prints are quite important to me this season. I've embossed leather toppers to resemble leopard and shown them with leopard pattern silk scarves. I've also done a group of faux panther coats and jackets. I show the jackets with long, knife-pleated skirts and contrasting feline print tops. In Milan, Gianfranco Ferre does the most sophisticated animal looks. He uses knits, jacquards, and dyed fur, as well as prints. His look is modern, but his mood has the glamour of the 30s. He takes his inspiration from Africa of the early part of the century, and going on safari was part of colonial life. When the English people they were going around the world, they were used to, to bring with them everything from, from their past. You know, it's uh, the spirit of the colonial. And that's the exotic animal print story of the 80s. Will antique dealers 100 years from now be offering 1980 objects such as computer graphics or hand-thrown pottery bowls? We'll take a look at the possibilities in a moment. Six top designers tell me what they think could be the collectibles from the 80s. They have a wide variety of ideas, as you'll hear after these messages. 